I think the expectations are high for the Michigan football team. I think you think when you look at our roster and you see we've got nine starters returning on offense um, and some guys that have played in big time situations, I think the expectations are higher. You know, obviously when you look at our defense and what Coach Brown has built on the defensive side of, you know, every year consistently being, you know, a top five defense in the country, um, if not the best, um, being able to, to build an offense to be able to match that, to be able to have the complete team is what I'm excited about. Um, our expectations are high because of the demand that we hold on ourselves too. Uh, you know, we, we carry an expectation uh, in that offensive side of the room uh, that we're going to be great, that we're going to be the best. And, uh, you know, I think it's our time time offensively uh, to change the narrative about Michigan football. Um, it's our time to develop our own identity on offense uh, to carry with us and create a legacy here um, that we can build a championship team. I was very quick on the decision making process. I mean, when you have an opportunity uh, to come here as the offensive coordinator, and oftentimes maybe your first job as an offensive coordinator, you went into a situation trying to figure out what went wrong and how to fix it. Uh, and this is truly a challenge to me of how to make it better. Uh, it's not necessarily a challenge of what went wrong and how to fix it, um, but this is a challenge of how, do, how can we take this program to the next step? How can we keep building upon the legacy that's here um, and being able to provide for not only our student athletes, but our fans base and being able to take this to take this program in the direction that we're headed. Coming here to University of Michigan has been an unbelievable experience for me. Coach Obar has been so supportive, um, just truly not only supportive to me as a coach, supportive to me uh, with my family, um, allowing them to come to practice every day, just being out there, being active. Um, he's been a great coach to, to work for. I mean, he just uh, he lays down a foundation that is truly built on relationships and trust. And, um, you know, he's enabled his trust in me and to develop this offense into the direction that we're taking it. And so, um, you know, one of the unique things about taking this job was just my appreciation for this program and for him as a coach and all the things that you know he's been able to accomplish throughout his coaching career um, but then also all the things that this program's been able to accomplish uh, this made it a no-brainer in my mind and an opportunity that I just couldn't turn down you know I think the biggest key to recruiting here is selling our brand you know when you look at the University of Michigan we really do have it all um, you know you, you have an opportunity to come here at a perfect time um, where you can chase all of your goals and dreams, not only athletically, academically. Um, you look at the rich history and tradition that we have from a football program, um, but then you look at the academic rankings, and there's no school around that can compete and compare at this highest level um, that gives you an opportunity uh, to get a world-class degree um, that can take care of you for the rest of your life and put you in a networking um, system that's going to be able to provide for you well beyond football, but also being able to achieve all your dreams on the field, whether that's compete for championships, Big Ten championships, national championships, get drafted, go to the NFL, um, whatever you choose. I truly believe the University of Michigan can provide everything that you want. The, the running game is very important to me. Um, you know, that's our base foundation. That's where everything starts. Uh, if you want to be good throwing the ball, you got to have a sound and solid running game um, to be able to implement your play action passes, your drop back passes. Uh, but with our RPO world, you know, the running game is very important. And so, uh, uh, you know, I think when you look at the strength of us offensively right now, I would say the strength of our team on offense is our offensive line with the experience that we have coming back. A uh, number of players, Ben Bredesen, Cesar Ruiz, uh, you know, John Runyon, those guys are phenomenal players. Um, and and so, you know, we've got to we've got to continue to build depth at the running back position. I'm excited about the players that we have, uh, you know, just coming back. You know, we've got a few guys we got to get back from banged up, um, but I think they all have a different skill set. Uh, and I think what we're doing offens offensively is going to allow those guys um, to be able to, to to use that speed and space uh, to allow our offensive line to block favorable numbers um, because we're cr we're creating an advantage on offense um, to be able to get, allow our running backs uh, to get open with their great reads and coach uh, coach Jay Harbaugh has done a really good job developing those guys and although some people may look at our running back room and say hey you know we don't have a, a certain guy coming back that's a returning starter I have the utmost confidence in that room that you know our production is going to increase uh, and we won't see that dip any. It's speed and space is defined really to me by an attitude uh, that reflects how we're going to attack opposing defenses. Um, you know, it's my job uh, as the offensive coordinator when we talk about speed and space, not only is that talking about getting our skill guys active and creating um, schemes that are schematically going to be able to take attack opposing defenses' weaknesses, but also in the run game. Uh, you know, we're a big RPO run based uh, run pass um, operation team from offense standpoint. So we're always looking to put the defense in conflict however we can be. You know, it's truly 
in my philosophy that if we can't block a guy, we're going to try to read him, whether that be reading defenders at the first level, second level, or third level. So as, as much conflict that we can put on the opposing defense to not allow those guys uh, to sit on their heels to think, um, but be able to react to what we're doing offensively, it's really what creates the speed and space conflict for us. And so, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, we're excited about. Um, we've, got the, we've got tremendous talent at all of our skill positions and looking forward to getting those guys out uh, in open space on the field, letting those guys be playmakers. Balance is very important within our offense, and that's something we preach since day one. That's one of the main staples and philosophies in our offense. And when we talk about being balanced, we don't talk about just, you know, run pass 50-50. Uh, we talk about, you know, running the ball when we want to, running the ball when we have to, throwing the ball when we want to, throwing it when we have to. Uh, but the other part about being balanced, it's the number of guys that touch the football. And I think that's the exciting thing about our offense is, you know, how involved every person is on the field. Um, you look at the past numbers of offenses that I've been around, the ball is spread around evenly. Uh, and it's really uh, dictated upon what the defense is doing. Um, so our, you know, our receivers can all have you know, 40 or 50 plus catches along with our tight ends. Our running backs will have multiple rushes and multiple catches. Uh, and when a defense has to defend every man on the field, uh, that's, when you're, you know, that's when you're able to put them in conflict um, because they know they just can't double one guy or put their eyes on one guy, but any guy at any time uh, can get the ball. And that's, you know, that's something that's very important. Um, that's something we do a really good job uh, keeping, uh, keeping tabs on on offense is how many touches certain players have and who do we need to get the ball to more. You know, we put a lot on our quarterbacks as far as uh, getting us into the right place. Uh, we don't put a lot as far as audible and checking at the line of scrimmage. Um, there's some things that we put up on our offensive line as far as uh, protections wise, uh, but we want our quarterbacks to be able to think at the line of scrimmage to be as gather as much information as possible pre-snap, um, whether that's by you know safety rotation or defensive alignment. Um, we want those guys to be able to think uh, and being able to go through their reads and go through their decision makers find out who their conflict player is, who their movement key is. Um, and so, you know, we try to take a little bit of that off that plate uh, and put that in our plate as coaches, making sure that on every play call, we've got an answer for whatever the opposing defense is going to do. You know, I think there's a huge emphasis as far as, you know, getting the play call in at, at a certain amount of time and, you know, allowing our quarterbacks to gather an offensive line to gather as much information at the line of scrimmage. Um, because we are a no huddle team, um, we often get lined up fast. We have the ability to play in four or five different tempos. Uh, we can play extremely fast. Um, we can play in our base uh, tempo, which allows us to gather as much information at the line of scrimmage, whether that's making, you know, mic points for our offensive line or whether that's quarterback gathering information. Um, the thing that we choose is to dictate that tempo. Um, and so, you know, I think our, our kids have done a really good job uh, playing within all four of those tempos this spring um, and choosing the right time when to implement those tempos uh, and when to use them in, in game-like situations. I think our receiver room and even our tight end room is really excited about this offense. I think uh, just the opportunity to touch the ball uh, on a number of different plays, not only uh, pass plays, but run plays. You know, I think, uh, you know, they're able to see through the cutups and what we're doing in practice, um, just their opportunity. So every play, you've got to be um, in the mindset that you could possibly touch the ball. Um, so I think it's led to a lot of excitement. It's led to a lot of buy-in um, that, there, you know, there's no dummy routes. There's no clear routes that we run. Everybody's a viable option at any point. Um, and so I think, you know, uh, you look at the talent that we have in those rooms, and although this spring we've been kind of a little bit down as far as our depth, um, as far as some injuries go, I think the overall both rooms, the tight end room, the receiver room, is really excited about the opportunity they have uh, it, within this offense to get the ball uh, and make plays. You know, I think the change for this roster in our offense, I think the players have done an unbelievable job this spring. And I think it starts with our assistant coaching staff. I think our offensive coaches have done a really good job uh, installing the offense, um, installing the base principles and, and foundation of what I want to be accomplished. And our players have done a really good job learning. Um, you know, I think throughout the first few practices, there was a big learning curve uh, because it was obviously all new. Um, but if you've seen the, 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 the growth um, of our offense over the past few practices and the, the number of plays that have been made um, and then the number of plays that we're just maybe one guy off from. I think the kids truly have the utmost confidence in what we're asking them to do. Uh, they're playing at a very high level now and one that I'm really excited about carrying over until when the season gets here. I think I'm truly blessed to be in this position as the offense coordinator to have the number of coaches on our staff. Uh, I'm on our offensive staff that have been previous play callers and have pre pr uh, previous experience in this conference, you know, going against certain teams. I think that's been valuable to me as a first-time play caller, um, you know, 
uh, creating our offense. As I said from day one, uh, this is not my offense. This is our offense. And so, you know, I've allowed every coach in that room to have input in what we're doing um, to, to most benefit our players, to put them in a position to be successful. Um, and so each week as we game plan and we put together the game plan, everyone's going to be involved. It's not just going to be, you know, my thoughts or my ideas. Um, you know, each one of our coaches is going to bring value. They're going to bring, you know, a different perspective to our offensive game plan. And um, from their, you know, perspective positions to allow us to build and put together the best game plan to allow our kids to go out and be successful on Saturdays. I think the biggest advantage for me at my age is, you know, I don't look at, at coaching as, as one of the, you know, things that uh, is dependent upon age or experience. You know, I think it really depends on your, your outward thinking, your ability to grow and do, ability to develop each and every year uh, to, to do what's best for the players. So I think, um, you know, just when you look at my base philosophies offensively and, you know, things that we're doing to challenge the opposing defense to put them in conflict, uh, is we're always thinking outside of the box, doing what's best for our players to put them in position to be successful. So um, I don't often re reflect on my age. I think my experience within this profession, uh, not only as a player, uh, being able to play it on the defensive side of the ball, being able to play it, you know, at the highest level in the NFL, um, has gained me, you know, valuable experience as an offensive coach as far as attacking defenses, um, understanding what defenses are trying to do, and understanding the weaknesses uh, to being able to put our kids in the best position and be successful. Yeah, the biggest things that I was able to learn while I was at the University of Alabama was, uh, you know, just work ethic. You know, uh, that's one of Coach Saban's greatest strengths is challenge each and every coach. Um, and that's one of the things that I think oftentimes gets overlooked uh, throughout your coaching career. Sometimes we fall back based on, um, you know, doing things the way we've always done them over the past, whether that's been by routine or just by choice. Uh, and Coach Saban really challenges each and every one of his coaches uh, to think outside of the box and do what's best for their players. Um, so learning from him and his experience and also, um, being a routine guy, just keeping it consistent routine throughout the week, whether that's in your approach from game planning, uh, that's your approach in coaching the players and preparing the players. Um, there was so much valuable lessons that I was able to learn under Coach Saban that I truly think, you know, made me a better coach in a year. And it's something I'm so grateful for, for my experience there. You know, I think um, both conferences, the Big Ten and the SEC, are, are similar uh, in the um, – uh, the area as far as the physicality within the conferences. They're both very big, tough teams that, uh, you know, that play physical brands of football, um, great defenses, and, and really try to grind out, uh, you know, games in the running game. Um, but I think what we were able to do this past year in the SEC was something that was different. Um, you don't see the spread element within the SEC quite, quite often, um, just like you don't see many teams within the Big Ten with the spread element. So, you know, I think some conferences, I think conferences have, uh, you know, some of their similarities. I think the differences in the conferences obviously stand out in recruiting. Um, you know, how fertile the uh, recruiting grounds are down south um, within the states of Georgia, Florida. Um, you look around even in the state of Alabama and just from the northeast standpoint, um, there's not as many uh, uh, states that probably produce at some of the levels uh, that are some of those states produces number of Division One players, but the football is still really good. The high school coaches are really good within the state of Michigan, within the state of Ohio, and so uh, you know I think uh, you know a lot of people look at it from a recruiting based standpoint and say how the conferences are different because it's I think it's a little bit more intense in the SEC recruiting, uh, but that's nothing that you can't do in the Big Ten. I think you know at the end of the day the brand of football that you put out there speaks for itself regardless of what conference you're in, um, and that's something that we're looking to do is is create a brand of football uh, that people respect not only in the Big Ten, but in the SEC.